What's up, witches? What's up? I'm Linda. And I'm John. And this is Getting Witchy. It and is indeed. Yes, it is. And today we are going to be talking about the Celtic gods and goddesses. They are just as twisted. Well, I mean, yeah, they're just as twisted as the, the Greek pantheon. Oh, <laughs> yeah. And Roman. And, I mean... Well, there's 400 of them. Mm, yes. That sounds more like a Hindu fucking pantheon, to be honest. Excuse my language, or not. But um, anyway, yeah, the Celtic. And uh, from my research, although I lean very heavily towards uh, the Gaelic and Irish uh, stories, myths, um, pantheon, and so forth, I knew nothing really I mean in the grant did you know there was a king okay so there was a king that was ruling and during a battle he which I will give more detail later but during the battle he lost his right hand so he lost the right to rule his brother made him a sterling silver hand didn't quite give him the right to rule apparently, but that hand was stolen by his brother's son, so his nephew, mm -hmm. who the father, his father, promptly killed and used dude's right hand to attach to his brother's, and he was able to rule again after defeating the person that succeeded him, or his successor. It's dude. And the whole sex thing is in there too. They were fucking twisted. Okay. I'm just well, saying, I mean, like, that's, I, I don't know. Anyway, um, today, um, Saturday the, is it 13th? Mm -hmm. Yeah, there was a really cheesy movie called Saturday the 14th. Like Friday the Thirteenth, mm -hmm. they did a Saturday the Fourteenth as a parrot. It, it was funny, but it was cheesy as shit. Anyway, I just thought of that. Okay. Sorry. Anyway, um, today we did our first vendor event for Three Sisters Botanicals, which is our herbal shop, um, clinical herbalist, where you can get an herbal consultation. I just call it a apothecary. Well, I mean, yeah, there's that too. Um, we make personal care products, and we also make like witchy potions, like harmony powder and the kids love the witch powder. powder. The kids that love was a popular and it was very price it, well. Today. Well, you know what's interesting though is yes, it was popular. However, see, we had a little um, like wheel of fortune hand. Yes. That it, we took basically. Wheel. Like, this was, this is, or was, our very first event, so some things were kind of like we just brainstormed and created something. Yes. So, during a yard sale event, mm -hmm. um, or a yard sale exploration yes. that we did one, one weekend, which we haven't done in a while, but anyway, um, we ran across something, a, a, a um, domino set. I wanted the domino set. And dude was like, the domino set is like, what, $7? Something like so that. But, but if you take all these other games. All the games. It's for just 10 bucks. So I'm like, I mean, they were all used, but I was like, uh, okay. Um, and did it. And only one of the games had all the pieces. Yes. Out of five. One of the games was <laughs> Including Life. Including Life. <laughs> the SpongeBob version. <clears throat> um, but anyway, it has the spinning wheel thing. So... We talked about it, and she created a homemade version with um, a piece of cardboard from the back of a notebook, a, a spiral yeah, notebook, notebook. Um, and then one of my Grandma Kane's uh, thimbles, and it worked pretty well. It, it, it was a balancing thing. Yeah. But we're gonna get a, a yeah, real we're one. gonna get a real one. We're gonna get, but we had that and. You made... Oh, we had so many different... 
surprises that could be one we had wish powder harmony powder we had the lavender and oats milk bath salts we had the rose hibiscus bath salts there were four different aromatherapy blends you could choose from four uh one was success one was focus one was grief relief and then female balance female balance yes um and then there were like six different liquid extracts you could choose from which each one has its own no one no one won that well there was one kid who did but he was like what is that for and he was like yeah no never mind but he was the first person (laughs) who spun the wheel okay um and he was like yeah and i was like or if you don't want that you can choose one of these other things he's like you know what i'm good well i think i i'm sorry i got squirrel um so my point yes it the wish powder was very popular but it was literally people spun Mm -hmm. the dial and it landed on the color that was associated to the wish powder right just saying like destiny universe Mm -hmm. like and wish powder is really good for kids because it helps and helps them keep magic alive yes yes and we even had that one that one lady who um from ashley from the travel agency right who had come over and that was her prize i think they call themselves travel advisors now well okay travel advisors um, i just saw that some somewhere but you know. but she had won a large vial of the wish powder and when i explained to her what it does she was like oh that's so great because i have kids that's and, perfect for my kids. Yeah, that's perfect for my kids. And we decided to let her spin again to see if she could win something for herself. Which because, she did. Which she did. Um, she won she the... She took success. The success aromatherapy So the other blend. popular thing was that aromatherapy, your choice of, and everybody, literally everybody, you didn't make any other rollers. I think there was only one of them. <coughs> Where was I? Um, something from the car? No, you were there. It was... The girl's mom had already come through and won something, and then the girl oh, chose focus. Gotcha. Originally, that's right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Originally, she said success, and then she's like, "No, wait. I think focus is more what I need right now." Um, but yeah, originally success. And was I love her that first because choice. she's putting energy into it as well, right. without even touching it yet. She's putting yeah. the energy out she's there. She's like, "No, no, no. This is what <coughs> I need." Anyway, it was uh, what was this? The spring. The spring carnival in okay. Santan Valley, Arizona which was our very first vendor event. I had never heard of this before, and I'm glad we participated. I'm glad we went. I'm, I'm kind of, what I'm disappointed with with the whole thing is that after talking to your friend, mm-hmm. which we haven't discussed whether or not mentioning names, so I don't know if that's appropriate or not, if we haven't. Oh. Yeah, I haven't really discussed that with her, but. Anyway, with your friend, come to find out there were 30 people, 30 vendors, 30 different that, vendors signed that signed up to be there. And there were, I think, the only next 10. 10 or 11. I think only 10 of us showed up. Yeah. Um, so that was kind of disappointing because that, uh, that's a full two thirds. Right. And at this, at, at, at one side of me is like, well, I kind of understand it. But at the same time, the reason I understand it is effed up because I understand it because like shit comes up. Like right. I didn't pay anything to be there. Right. It was free. I didn't pay anything to be there, which note, it's free. Like, right. if you have something you're doing, like... Like, it was free to the vendors. It was free to anybody who showed up to they participate. They had a modern DJ. Yes. So, so I say modern because there were no records. Yeah, it there was were all no playlists. records. It was all... But they had a bubble machine. Kids love that. Oh, yeah. They freaking love that. It was it was a good show. I, I'm just disappointed that two-thirds of the vendors that signed up chose not to follow through with their commitment. And I think another thing that may have So, yeah, I'm them. calling you out. For whatever that's worth. <laughs> I think another thing, though, that may have hurt them was that the address we were given led to a school across the street and from down, where we actually were. And down about a football field, roughly. Yeah. Roughly. Um, yeah. But still, though... Yeah, but we at but least turned around and checked it out and said... Well, it, yeah, you but know. because there were people set up with the, right. the canopies. Like, a common sense, which I know is rare right now... I get it, um, but common sense would be what we had. It'd be like that. There's a football go- game going on right. This can't right. be where they want us. There's right. a there's park a, right over there. There's a just whole bunch right of right there, sports. and canopy. So right. we went back. So we went back, 
checked in and found out. But there was nobody really to check in with. That was another thing. They said yeah. go to the State Farm canopy or tent and right. the and dude check was in like, and the dude I don't was know like, what you're talking no about. It. Uh, yeah. Anyway. So, but again, first time experience. First time experiences. Um, it was awesome. Wish we could do the whole, what is it, tomorrow? Oh, the spring fling. Spring fling. In where what in their and their thing was uh drink, eat, drink and dine and shop drink dine and shop yeah and they I like that. they were talking about having things like permanent jewelry and oh clothes and a whole bunch of stuff and so it's like that's they okay you know but i mean if i had known about that like that would have been something else i could have gotten into plan for yeah but, but there's next year. Yes, there is next year. And we are also going to be expanding into other vendor events. Yes. And while we are, before we even get into our topic, I do want to thank our viewers and listeners because we have hit quite a few milestones in the past few weeks since our last posting. Um, we are now number one in, I think, three different Good Pods leaderboards um out of and we're like top five in five of them which is cool. awesome because originally we were like top 10 in five of them um we've hit like 600 views on youtube okay and like 700 downloads on our uh, audio podcast okay. so like we're doing really well you I mean know? considering so, we're doing this for fun we're not going right. out chasing shit down like right you know and so, ambulance chasers look at this crazy fool right um or doing skits although that could be fun like there's a couple channels I watch that deliberately set up skits and it's, they're they're kind of cool yeah some of they're them. fun anyway but um yeah that, so we're going to be doing that. We're already talking about some. What was that in October? Oh, the Women's Expo. Yeah, um, we still got to look into that. We're not saying we're going to be there, but that is our plan. Um, well, she will be. Mm -hmm. I am. I would assume I could participate as a vendor. Yeah. But anyway. And if you're in the Phoenix area, we're also looking into venturing out into the Gifts and Graces at the Southwest Institute of Healing Arts. So you could also look for us there, too. Okay. So, um, the Celtic gods and goddesses. Hmm. <sighs> you know, that whole thing we just did would be a short, too. <laughs> you realize that, right? I know. Okay. Um, the Tuatha de Nantes. Uh, which by conventional English right now uh, basically means the folk of the goddess Danu. Um, was known at an earlier time as just Tuatha De. Not, okay, Tuath De, not Tuatha. Um, there is no other vowel after Tuath, but uh, which meant uh, the tribe of the gods. Um, they were a supernatural race. They they acknowledge they're kind of like uh, again like the Hindus, mm. where they acknowledge that um, they call them gods, but they're they don't call them gods at the same time. They know that they are a supernatural race uh, of uh, individuals that represented different deities within their uh, pantheon. So. Okay saying that correctly. Um, they were depicted as kings, uh, queens, druids, bards, warriors, heroes, and healers and craftsmen. Now, again, they didn't, they're not saying that they were the gods of, even though they were right. being supernatural, but they were represented as all those things. An interesting aspect is that unlike the um, Greek and Roman pantheon, they had multiple kings that ruled. Now, there is one that was said to be the father god, Dagda, which we talked about mm -hmm. that. There are okay. so many, re uh, uh, well, I guess religions, even though that's not what they are, um, that have Dagda or Dogda or some variants of that word or name 
in them that I, I found that interesting. But um, there were also the uh, Fomorians. Um, in Celtic mythology, uh, they were giants. Well, how does that sound familiar? Um, that were the very first group of beings. Again, they're using the term beings. Right. They, they, don't, they don't call them gods, necessarily. And that's in multiple sources uh, based on um, written myth and poems, which is where most of, just like the Greek ones. <coughs> so, oh, and just like the Greek, I mean, you had the Titans. Right. Who were overthrown by the Olympians. Right. Well, that's what happened with them. Well, there was a great battle between them. Um, the god in question um, that I mentioned earlier, or king in question, um, lost his hand in that battle. They won, the Tuatha Dé Na. Mm -hmm. They won, um, which is exactly what happened with the Olympians. But that's where he lost his hand, and then his brother gave him the silver one. It's interesting as fuck. Like, it's well written. So anyway... Um, the Dagda was the father god of the Celtic pantheon um, and plays an important role uh, in many of the stories in uh, Irish lore. Um, he was the god of earth and is known as the good god. Which I find it because there was in, in Sumerian with Enki and Enlil, one mm -hmm. was considered the good god. Right. Who it ended up getting twisted as he was the serpent. Ah, somehow. Yes. Um, He's the leader. Now, this is where it gets. Kind of, this is in multiple sources. He's the leader of the Tuatha Dé Danann, but then there's kings. Yeah, it's. It, I, I need to dig a little bit deeper. He's portrayed as the father figure, king, and druid, uh, associated with fertility, agriculture, manliness, strength. We need this god to come back right. in today's <laughs> world. Anyway, uh, manliness, strength, as and magic. Druidry and wisdom. Yes, we need him to come back. <laughs> Please um, come back, Dada. <laughs> now, I really have not been able to look up the pronunciation of these things. I looked up se several, and they literally gave me the modern English pronunciation of the way the letters were set up. Like, I know that's not how... They did not pronounce what what's where oh yeah it's spelled d-i-a-n and in some instances there's a space and some not um and then it's c-e-c-t c-e-c-h-t and it was pronounced diane set yeah i know that's not but anyway so then there's Kernunos, uh, the horned one, which in many instances I found his image being interchanged with Dagda. Really? Yes. In many sources. Like, they, because they almost describe the same entity. I mean, it's the horned, he's, because Dagda has, is usually seen with, um, horns, antlers. Oh. And a staff. And then Kernunos has the, the, what they call the torque, but it's that either brass or gold ring around, basically a fucking necklace oh, or a choker. Okay. Um, with large antlers, uh, specifically of a stag. And then sometimes at his side is a horned serpent. Yeah, a serpent with antlers. My Kernunos doesn't have that. It has the serpent, but not with antlers what so your Kanunos is a knockoff Kanunos? No, no but the image that I have of him that statue that we got I understand what you're saying I think he's often depicted seated Oh, so he has the serpent down here. And here. He's got... Yeah. Oh, so, 
that's my Kernunos. statue of Kernunos. And I've got also, or we've got the statue of the, the goddess that you'll be talking about. Which one? Well, there's a couple, but one specifically that usually takes on the three stages or three aspects. Do you want to? No, go over your stuff first. Okay. Um, now, one that I have mentioned if, or started to mention is Agnes Ock. Uh, I, I know I'm not pronouncing that correctly, and I apologize to my ancestors, but uh, he was the Celtic god of youth and love. Um, he was a son of Dagda um, because Dagda fooled the, yeah, basically he pulled the Zeus oh. and tricked the river goddess who was already betrothed, not just betrothed, married, and they bore a child. And if, if I'm getting the, sto the, the myth right, and I'm po pretty positive I am, with this particular situation, because he rules basically all of Earth, he froze the sun in position um, to where her whole pregnancy was one day. Yeah. So for nine months. One day. He, yeah, he froze the sun in in once in the in the sky, so her pregnancy was one day, and then they could hide the fact that he got her pregnant. Yeah, it's pretty it's pretty far out. <coughs> um. Uh. Angus Oak is usually depicted with birds flying around him, which are said to symbolize. Um, the kisses and love that surrounds him at all times. Then there's uh, Diane Chet. That's the way it was. I know that's not how it's pronounced. Dean Chet, um, thought to be the god of healing. I say thought to be because it is listed in multiple sources that he did some kind of healing act, but he's never named as being the god of medicine or anything. Oh. Um, he created, he, he's definitely an engineer or an inventor. He created the silver hand for his brother after he lost it um, in the battle. It was called, uh, oh, it's up here. Sorry, guys. The Battle of Mag Tirid, which was equivalent, as I mentioned, that's my squirrel moment. I was talking about oh, the... Right. Um, the similarities between the Greek, you know, fighting the Titans. Um, so, thought to be the god of healing and medicine, uh, since he was technically the physician physician of the Tuatha Dé Um Again, I've spoken of this a couple times. It's a legend that, um, well, I didn't mention this actually. There's a legend that he blessed a well called the Well of the Slain. So, if you were injured you could bathe in this well and it would heal you. Hmm. Interestingly, another storyline is a friend of his who ruled another city-state of the gods, mm -hmm. is the way it's kind of implied, it's kind of strange, um, had a well of prosperity or well of... Um, not a well of eternity, like you wouldn't have eternal health or uh, eternal life, but it granted you something to drink from this well. Okay. And through the course of time, that got woven into Arthurian legend, and it became the Holy Grail. And that king over that land of where this well was, he became the keeper of the Holy Grail. Like, they wove that all through. They took one. It's just, it's really fascinating. Sorry, I'm getting sidetracked. Squirrel. Um, there's Arwan, uh, Celtic god of the underworld. Uh, no, known as the, the underworld was known as Anwen, with no vowels. Okay. Um, or land of the dead. Um, Puel, P 
P-W-Y-L-L. That's the one I was talking about that was the king of another land. Oh, Quill. Quill. Um, Arwen had a rival to rule the underworld. Again, like, there's kings, but there's one father figure of... It's kind of right. strange. So he had a rival that he didn't think he could beat. He asked Quill to trade places with him and Pawil and Pawil's wife defeated Dude's adversary by switching places. And he played the role of, as the god of the underworld. Well, Pawil is the king that became um, where he? he became Pelez. P-E-L-L-E-S who was the keeper of the Holy Grail and the cauldron of plenty. That's what it was, a cauldron of plenty. Or vessel of plenty. Anyway, it's I found it very fascinating. Um, and then there's Lug. Uh, L-U-G-H. Lug. Lug. Um, yeah, it's not a lug nut. Not Lug. 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 Um, which one of our Wiccan holidays is four. Mm -hmm. um, one of the most recent additions to the Pantheon, according to three sources that I found, um, one said that it was believed that he was added on by a monk, right, it, you know, copying the stories, um, but other that there's no real, I didn't see any, unlike St. Brigitte, where the goddess Brigitte actually became a Catholic fucking saint. Mm. <laughs> um, but, yeah. Um, and I believe, oh no, I got a couple more. Um, Goy Benut, <laughs> what? Stop. Uh, Goy Benoit? Benu? <laughs> Do G O I B H N I U. I know I should have done more diligent due diligence on looking up the pronunciations, but I forgot. We have a few things going on in the last couple of days, besides work. Um, God of weapon making and blacksmiths uh, was the maker of all the weapons. I found this pretty cool. Maker of all the weapons that the Tuatha Danann used, and in the hands of the Tuatha Danann. Those weapons would never miss their target. They would always strike true. Oh. I found that pretty fucking interesting. That is. I, I don't ask me why. Well, there's Odin's staff that never missed. His staff that would shoot energy. Okay. Hit that was one, and then uh, Zeus's lightning bolts supposedly never missed their target. If he threw it at something, it hit it, or them. Um, then there's uh, Belenus, uh, an ancient Celtic god, uh, another healing god. Um, s apparently, there was a cult of Belenus that stri now this is well into the um, after Common Era time period. Okay. Um, a cult of Belenis that stretched from the the Italian peninsula to the British Isles. That's a pretty big swath of land. Mm -hmm. um, and then the main uh, uh, home base for it was on the Adriatic coast. Uh, then there's Nit, um, which sounds... Russian? Yeah, well, yes, it does. <laughs> Um, no, actually, it doesn't. It does. No, I'm just kidding. Um, he was the god of war, the male god of war, and conveniently and not surprisingly, the god of Morrigan. The husband of Morrigan. Or husband of Morrigan. Um, now, then there's also Nuadu, a god king of the Tuatha Danann. Again, there's another one. Which is not the one that dude have to had to overthrow. Right. It's, this is a completely different one. Um, so 
also the god of hunting uh, and fishing. Um, oh no, this is the same one. My bad. Uh, lost his hand in the battle of Magturin uh, with the giants and lost his right to govern. Uh, his brother replaced it with a hand made of silver. But then it, this, this one was funny because in this source, it just says he received a functional human hand from his brother so he could challenge the successor and win back his throne. It never mentioned that the hand came from his nephew who stole the silver hand. Like it's, it's, it was pretty fun. It was pretty interesting. Uh, and then this Tyrannus. I wonder if that's where they got the dark Tyrannus idea from in Star Wars. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm wearing a Star Wars shirt, so. Yes, I, believe I thought of that when I looked it up too. But um, the god of thunder, lightning, and storms, the equivalent of Thor, obviously. Um, or the Roman god Jupiter. Okay then. Yeah. Now that's nothing out of the 400. Right. Yeah. You know, if if the the genders, which I find interesting, the ancient pantheons didn't have an issue with genders. Anyway, um, even if the genders were split evenly, mm -hmm. I mean that's a dozen. Right. Out of that's just mind blowing and how many. Right. Anyway. So when it comes to the goddesses, the first one that came up for me was uh, Kaliach. And you got to kind of do the... Kind of like, like in Jewish? Yeah. Okay. yeah. Um, she was the goddess of the cold and the winds. She determined how long and harsh the winters would be. So if you wanted a winter to be short and not short and mild, like you would want to basically... Petition her, right, and leave yeah. out offerings and stuff like that. Right, um, she is originally known as a divine hag and a creator deity. She has two different aspects. She is both maiden and crone. So half of the year she spends as the maiden, and the other half she spends as the crone. Or Hel hag. Or the hag, yes. So, in case they don't know what that meant then, because those terms mean something different now. Right. Well, so it was basically just an, an older woman who was beyond child-rearing years. And like, the, like your typical grandma. So, half of the year she spends as a young woman who is of child-rearing age. Right. And the other half she spends as grandma. The grandma. Wise old woman. Wise old woman. Um, her tools of creation or destruction included a hammer with which she controlled storms and thunder. Sounds kind of like Thor. Mm. And a hammer. <laughs> and a well which would occasionally overflow and flood the land. She was the patron of wolves emboldened by hunger. So, like, when the wolves are out in the middle of winter, like, she would take care of them and make sure that... They had food. Okay. Um, she was also a deer herder. Hence how she had the meat to take care of them. And on Samhain, which is the end of the Celtic year and the beginning of winter, um, it marks her the return of Kalia. Okay. Um, because she spends half of the year ruling, so she rules over the time when winter is present, but Brigid rules over the time of spring so they they share the year um and before anyone could rule over the land she was basically one of the deities that you would have to petition and placate in order for her to support your ruling over the land okay um she's associated with bodach which, who, with whom she had many children. Um, she is also said to be the maternal ancestor of every Irish man and tribe. And the reason for that is because she was said to have had seven periods of youth. So seven times during which she was a young woman 
During those times, she had many husbands, many parents, many children. But then after the seventh one, she was forever the old woman, the crone, the hag. Okay. Um, and by the time her last period of youth ended, she had already outlived all of her husbands and children. Oh, yeah, no doubt. Which I thought was kind of interesting. But um, it doesn't mention grandchildren or great-grandchildren. Because no. that would, I mean, the bloodline would yeah. continue. I mean, right. that was the whole point of the Da Vinci Code. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, and then, of course, we have Brigid. Um, yeah, for those of you who see it, it's B-R-I-G-I-D. It is pronounced Brigid, like Brigadier or Brigade. It is not pronounced Brigit. Brigid. Okay? G like good, not J like judge. Or George. Um, she was the goddess of poetry, healing, smithing, spring, fertility, life, and water. She had a lot of stuff going on. Yeah, but wouldn't she also want a battle? Yeah, I think so. Um, but her holiday is in bulk, which marks the midpoint of winter. So, as you can see, right there, in bulk. Um, she's the goddess of wells and many of Ireland's wells and waterways were dedicated to her. She is a triple goddess, which represents the three aspects, which according to my sources, the three aspects of fire, which are poetry, healing, and smithcraft. But in all of her aspects, she is named Brigid. Whereas in some cultures, the triple goddess has a different name for each aspect. Now, her status as a triple goddess allowed her to have many husbands, parents, and children without causing any contradictions in Celtic mythos, which I don't interesting. know how you could do I find that interesting that, that they... Okay. Yeah. Um, she's associated with the arrival of spring and the return of light after the dark winter months. Well, yeah, the, the because maiden... Her, right. And, I mean, basically her name means bright, like the, right. the rising of the sun. She rules over the springtime while the Kaliach ruled over winter. Um, she is revered by bards and storytellers who believed that she inspired them to create beautiful works of poetry and art. Well, she was the goddess of poetry. Yes. Yes, she was. Um... She's also known as a healer. Her sacred wells are said to have ha have healing properties. Again, sacred wells. Yes. Interesting. Um, also associated with the craft of metalworking and was believed to be the patron goddess of blacksmiths. Really? Yes. That's cool. She's, yeah. She, she's a she's, badass. She's a badass. I mean, she was already a badass, but yeah. Um, her father was Dogda. <laughs> so she that is... That mother... Now, dog... I got his name. Her mother <laughs> is said to be Danu. Oh, shit. Yes. So she is a member of the Tawatha de Danu. So wait a minute. So Danu being the mother goddess of all. Mm -hmm. Like the, the, that was the children of Danu or the uh, the gods of Danu, followers, right, the, whatever. The tribe of Danu. Tribe of Danu. Um, so her being primordial, it's the same story as... Um, the primordial connection with the goddess and her firstborn. Mm -hmm. So, okay. yeah, anyway. her mother is Danu, her father is Dagda, so... Uh, he is her, her father and grandfather. Yeah. So, her... Boy, no. She was the sister of... No. of uh, no, he is her brother and father. Yes. But anyway. Yeah. She was also the wife of the High King Bress, who was the one the, the one that lost his hand. And interesting, the, they call it High King. And the That's not what mother I, of uh, Ruadan, which was Bress's son. Okay. Um. Moving on, we have. 
and this is one thing I find interesting. There are some gods and goddesses that they just refer to by name, like Brigid. Mm -hmm. But then there are others that they refer to as the, like the Kaliach. Mm. And then there's this other one, this next one, the Morrigan. See, I think, um, to me, what that says is that those are titles. Well, and Kaliach and not just because it's not just because the is there, but Morrigan sounds to me like a title, not necessarily a name. Now we've changed it over the centuries to be Morgan or Morgan. Right. Morrigan or Morgan, but that's not the way it was. And, and that sounds to me like a title. I think that's why. It, it, it does, but in every source, like, she's never referred to as just Morrigan. No. She's referred to yeah. as the Morrigan. As with Kaliach, she's always referred to as the Kaliach. But Kaliach actually is a title. It means the hag or the old woman, the crone. Um, whereas with Morrigan... Like, there's, nobody has ever, none of the sources I've read define what that define means. What that means. They, it's just her name, but everybody always refers to her as the Morrigan. It's probably one of those things where it means, sorry, I didn't mean to go back into prepubescent there. <laughs> <coughs> um, uh, based on everything that I know of Morrigan, um, be it the various movie, TV, um, lots of literature mm -hmm. um, about it's usually a her too mm -hmm. it's it's actually it's always, always a her, a her. Um, to me I feel that that title means like the Christians would call it the evil one but I would more define the title as um, um, the dark one, which doesn't necessarily mean evil, right? Um, or the dangerous one, which also doesn't, doesn't necessarily, necessarily mean evil. evil. It means if you cross her, you're fucked, right? <laughs> um, but that's to me what I got. I believe that those are titles, not names. But okay, so the Morgan was the goddess of war and fate, or is the goddess of war and fate? Um, powerful goddess associated, yeah. Um, also a triple goddess. Ooh. Often depicted as a trio of sisters I or as a this. shapeshifter who could take on various forms, including that of a crow. Well, yeah, that, that I knew based on the stuff that I, yeah. What? Which freaked people out that they could, that someone can shapeshift. So are you like having a fantasy of sisters right now or something? No. What? Okay. No, I'm talking about the, <laughs> no, I'm talking about the shapeshifting into a crow. Okay. But I found it fascinating that she also has a triple goddess. What did I just miss? <laughs> what? <laughs> oh my goodness. Um, she was said to appear on the battlefield before important battles, predicting the outcome and sometimes choosing who would live or die. Hmm. Well, I mean, some just, some don't some faiths or beliefs think that the crow guides the spirit? To the, un right. to the other world, yeah. Um, and much like the Kalia, she is also associated with sovereignty and the power to rule and protect a kingdom. So she is also another one that if you wanted to rule over a land, you had to placate her first. So Pwilf, And gain her favor. Pwilf fucking pissed her off. So she made it so he lost his hand. And he had to work his way back to get it. That's what it sounds like to me. She was said to test the courage and worthiness of kings and to grant or withhold her favor based on their actions. And she's also sometimes seen as a terrifying force of destruction, but at other times as a protector of the weak and the oppressed. She so again, sounds like a Hindu god. So again, again she's, going back to that, you know, a, like the dangerous one. Like she mm -hmm. will protect those who need protecting, but she'll also fuck you up if you cross her. Again, sound an awful lot like Hindu faith with different names <laughs> and without all the fancy colors and everything. Right. The way they do it. Which um, I'm, that's going to be an interesting one for us to do. Oh, my goodness. That might need to be a two parter. Yeah, I think Honestly, so. Honestly, that might need to be a two parter. I think that's going to have to be a two parter. Um, Is that the next probably one? Be, no. No? No, it'll be our last. Okay. We need to prepare for it. Okay. <laughs> um, 
So next we have Apona, who was the goddess of horses. Horses had their own goddess? Yeah. All right. Well, they're majestic what? creatures. They I are. like them. I love. I mean, they're. I love them. They don't seem to like me. Really? Yeah. Oh, have I ever? Okay. They really no. like Catherine the Great. <laughs> okay, so my grandfather. You're just gonna ignore that. Yes. No. Right? I, I. I hear you. <laughs> but my grandfather worked on a ranch for as long as I can remember. He taught me to ride horses. Taught me how to climb a rope. And like lots of stuff. And during the times that we would go visit him, we would always go horseback riding. Y'all, I have been bucked off, meaning like the horse bucks and you go over the front. I've been thrown off the back. I've been rolled over on. I've been kicked in the knee by fucking horses. And yet for some stupid reason, I continue to get up on them. So. No, I was just <laughs> saying you, you continue. To, that, not, not on horse. No, that would make you Catherine the Great. You thought I wouldn't throw that back in? <laughs> anyway. But that's cool that horses had their own goddess. Yes. I yes. did not know that. See, again, yes, I I lean towards this pantheon, but I obviously don't know shit about this pantheon. There's so much info. Yes, so she's believed to protect the horses and the riders and was often depicted as a woman riding a horse or standing beside one. She's also associated with fertility and abundance, and her worship was particularly popular among the Gaulish and Roman cavalry. I want. Did, did, you, did you happen to know, look at what maybe her stones or crystals were? Like every god and goddess has, like. I have not. Because in Native American beliefs, turquoise is the protector of those that that ride horses. Oh. And I'm curious if... Uh, yeah, I have not looked that up. Um, she was believed to have the power to protect travelers and ensure safe journeys. And many people would offer her gifts before setting out on long journeys. So if they were going to be traveling overseas mm -hmm. or going on long uh, journeys on foot or on horseback, like they would make offerings to her to ensure that they had a safe journey. And she was also seen as the protector of the natural world and associated with the cycles of life and death. Interesting. Yeah. And then, of course, we have Danu, the mother goddess. Mm -hmm. um, the mother of the Tuatha de Danan, or Danin, the ancient Irish gods and goddesses. Um, she was believed to be the mother of all the gods and associated with fertility, motherhood, and cycles of nature. So based on what I just quickly found, turquoise is one of her stones. Oh, look at you. Um, Danu was a nurturing figure who protected her children and provided for their needs. Mother. Good mother. But I she's not considered Mother Earth. Well, no, but she's the mother goddess. Okay. Well, like in others, the female goddess, the primary female goddess. Oh, the goddess primordial is one is seen as Mother Earth. Earth. Um... No, not really with her. Because that's but she, up. she is associated with the land and the natural world, and her okay. worship was closely tied to agriculture and the growth of crops. Mm. Um, she's also a goddess of the other world, the realm of the gods and spirits that was believed to exist alongside our world. So she's not only a goddess here, she's a goddess on the other side. Anwen, with the kingdom of on a yes. n n n literally yes. n n n n w n <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> and then we have rhiannon the goddess of love and the other world um she's associated with love beauty and of course the other side often depicted riding a white horse and considered to be a protector of travelers and a guide to the other world also associated with fertility and abundance, and her worship was closely tied to the cycles of nature. And I believe Stevie Nicks sings about her. Um, her story is one of devotion and sacrifice. Yes, she does. According to legend, she married a mortal man who was accused of stealing her horse. To clear his name, Rhiannon chose to take the blame and was punished by being forced to carry travelers on her back for years. And eventually she was able to clear her name and was reunited with her husband. 
which his name was again? Uh, the sources that I read didn't I think say. That's, okay, anyway. So, yeah, I recognize her name. I don't yeah. remember who she was married to. So, um... But, yeah, that's what yeah. I came across. That's like two dozen of 400. Yeah. Good luck with that. So, um, I'm going to be doing my research. I, the couple of books that I have here, one specifically that I thought would be um, really good for it, I happen to have gotten actually literally years ago. Um, yeah, didn't have anything. It was more of the history, which is cool too, right. of the Celtic and Gaelic uh, nations. But yeah, I got to do some research since yeah. this is the one I lean towards. But they're twisted too. Yeah. They're so tw there's there's a story oh what dude went looking for and this might be with Rihanna I but but or Rian but I could be wrong but there's a story where dude went looking for a wife he came across uh, this young maiden he fell in love with her but then she turned into a swan and there were like 12 swans there he had to figure out which one was her if he guessed wrong he lost her forever but through a series of events he guessed which i find interesting because zeus turned into a swan to break her yeah mm -hmm. um but he had to figure out which swan was her and he did of course I mean, yeah um but like there's really weird like shape shifting fucking stories of them doing some really crazy shit. It's interesting as well. I, yeah, comical even. What you never heard that one? Um, I will find I, it. I've got it in my is research. That not the story of Swan Lake. I have no idea the story behind Swan Lake. I'll I've have to never. Look that. Anyway, we appreciate you guys. Um, thank you for being part of another episode. I know this one's a really long one. <laughs> That's what she's talking about. <clears throat> Keep an eye on our Instagram. We're going to cut that out. <laughs> You're an... going to edit that out. <laughs> Says you. Keep an eye on our Instagram page because we are going to be posting a contest here within the next couple days. Oh, yeah. Um, where we have three different prizes that can be won. Uh, one of them is a chakra stone kit. One of really them cool. is a mini travel altar. So if you've never seen what these are, they're really cool. Um, it's basically like everything you need to do magic on the go in a small little container, like a an Altoids tin or just say that. Um, like a mini travel first aid kit um, size thing. And the third one is actually a chakra essential oils kit. So oh, I didn't know about keep that one. Okay. an eye on our Instagram page because we are going to be giving the rules and how you can enter the contest for that. And that'll be up within the next couple days. So, till then, peace, peace. out, witches. We love y'all. <laughs>